What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Lil Donnie from The Wild Bunch. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what you like about the channel. Help me make it better. You know, the, I need all of y'all. I need everybody to come and tell me what you want. Tell me how I can help. Tell me. I, you know, we got connections. Let's tell me what y'all want to hear. This is about us. This is about us helping us. Help give up. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you share it. You know, we want some of this information to get out to everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about certain times. But one more, hold on. Make sure you go get my book, Wild Bunch, The Dimensions of a Brownsville Millionaire, out now and on Amazon. Go get this book. If you're from Brownsville and I come out there, you better have, you better have this book. If you're from Brownsville and you ain't got this book, I'm going to have to talk to you. So let's get to something. Because I'm always hearing... All of these stories about Harlem, you know, rooftop, like they was the only ones there. This, it, 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 was, it was in Harlem, but it was Brooklyn niggas in there. It was, it, Roxy was in Manhattan. Latin Quarters was in Manhattan. The Fever was in the Bronx. But I don't really hear like, oh, I know they recently showed the Wu-Tang show. And they showed Wu-Tang from Staten Island. And they had a couple of Brooklyn people in the crew that was up at there. But it was Brooklyn, not rappers, Brooklyn dudes up going up in there. I remember me, my, the guard true, we used to put on the leather suits, leather pants, good leather jackets, little good clock, clock, because we was from the 90s, so we was into that Wallaby clocks. That's how we got into Wallaby shoes, Wallaby clocks, and, and clocks going to Delancey Street getting the clocks and stuff. This, we, he's young doing this. But I never hear those stories about, like, from Brooklyn's side. That's where I'm coming in. I'm coming in to let them know we was from Brooklyn, Brownsville at that. We was from Brownsville, but we we was migrating out. We was getting out to the people. We was going to Flapper. We was going to Crown Heights. We was going to the Bronx, River Park Towers. We was going to Castle Hill. You know, because we used to be on the train and we meet people on the train. And, you know, it was a, it was a group of us. I could name all day. You know, I name all day, baby. I, I name all day. I name all day, baby. You want me to start naming names? I'll give you some names and they're going to connect. And if you know a comment, tell me if if you remember, you know, add on to the cypher. You know, peace, peace to the gods. True. Peace to the gods. So like I was saying. This is a time that I'm going to tell y'all about me and my crew. Me, J-Ski, Papa Doc, um, Tislam, Barry Bistro. Um, I want to make sure I have the right crew that went to the... Because we. this is what I used to do. Back in the days, they used to have a thing. Um, they used to call it the OJ. So when we used to go to 42nd Street... Because when we used to go to 42nd Street... They used to show the movie. We used to go to 42nd Street for the movies to watch the karate flicks. You know, we used to go, go watch the karate flicks on 40 Deuce. And back then, you could smoke. You'd be in the movie theaters all smoked out. You used to watch three karate flicks for 350 It used to be, if anybody, go in the comments and, and let the people know. We used to go to the 42nd Street. Your crew, take the train, 42nd Street. Movie theaters, they had all the Chinese flicks. All the Chinese flicks was dominating back then, really. It either was the Chinese flicks or it was like the scary movies. Freddy Krueger, Jason, all of those movies was popping. When Jason and Freddy Krueger come out, the deuce was flooded. So let me stay on the course. So what we would do, like I said, back to the OJ, they used to have a a car service, if you be up there and you don't want to go home, you know, you got, you get money, so you got money, be like, call the OJ. Now, I ain't going to lie, for me, I don't talk for everybody, I would say Harlem, <laughs> I stole that from Harlem, and I brought it to my dudes, because my dudes didn't know about it, because one day we was coming out, and they like, yo, I don't want to take care of it. I'm like, call the OJ, because I was peak what the Harlem niggas was doing. So fast forward, as we start getting a little more paper, you know, this us in Brownsville and our little crew, I told you my little crew, 
One day we wanted to go to the rooftop. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to call a limo. Call a limo. We got, we had enough money. I, I checked and see how much it cost. Back then it was like a deuce. $200 for some hours. Like it was like $200 for like eight hours or whatever. So I was like, oh, that ain't nothing. You know what I mean? So, and they had to give you some champagne and all that. When you get in there, champagne and all that in there. So what, what I did was I called the OJ. I called the limo, matter of fact. The limo come. Now everybody on my block, all the old ladies and all that shit, they never see, ain't nobody on my block doing it like that. <laughs> so when they see the limo pull up on the block, everybody like, yo, who that car for? You know, limo was big dog status. So when the shit pull up in front of my crib, I'm outside like this. It's my team in the back. They were all sitting in the back door, whatever, getting ready. Yeah, we going uptown tonight. And I'm out the window like this. Yo, where the fuck the limo at? That's all I'm doing. I didn't even know what the niggas talking about. And I'm just like, where the motherfucking limo at? When I see the motherfucking limo hit the block, I just jump up. Yo, here we go. Here's the limo. Let's go. We got to go. The niggas like, what was it? We all run outside and just jump right in the shit. The nigga like, yo, what the fuck? I get a nigga the money, yo, no, this is us. This is, we ordered this shit, man. We go to the rooftop, go to Manhattan, go uptown. I had already Googled that. They didn't even have Google back then, but I already knew the address. I told nigga the address. I guess back then the nigga had a map. <laughs> he mapped the shit out and he ain't never been up there. But So when we get to the motherfucking rooftop, there's probably like five or six of us jump out the joint. You know, back then we was all twisty twists. We go, we get up, and we and we we don't know we we in the, we in the mix. We don't we realizing when we was in the crack era, we don't know it's the fucking crack era. They not we're not in the crack era saying it's the crack era. We're just living our teenage life. We don't know we in the fucking history era or some shit. We just doing us. We was in there with them rich and all of them. We was in there with them niggas come but when we come in, they wasn't say, oh, little Donnie from Brownsville. Niggas uptown don't know us, so they wasn't young God from Brownsville and all of that. They, they don't know us. We coming in just doing us, but we holding our corner. We grew up in the 90s in Brownsville, where when you go in the, when you go in the, and you, when you go in those parties, whether it was the tunnel, Union Square, when you from Brooklyn and Brown Hill, as far, the, I only can talk about who I, with the crews I know, where I'm from. When we go in that motherfucking club, we pick our territory. We some territory dudes. We pick our territory in the spot. Oh, this is where we posted that up all night. We don't run out really chasing broads and all that. You know, if they feeling the style, they come. If they not... Hey, you, you know, everybody is uh, everybody good money, you know, so we'll pick our territory up in the spot, hold it down, doing our little one-two, Scooby-Doo, we get up out of there. So like I'm saying, I always hear the stories like Brooklyn wasn't in the house, but guess what? I'm going to bring it to y'all. It's coming. I'm going to bring the story of Brooklyn getting money, doing their thing. If you know how to act. If you know how to sing, if you know how to dance, do your thing. Don't wait. Don't wait for nobody. Get out there and do it yourself. You can do it yourself. Get out there. Give it all you got. Be the best you can be. And that's all that anybody can ask from you. You only got one life to live. There's only one. It'll come around one. So you make sure you give it all you got. If it, if it go right, it go right. If it go wrong, it go wrong. You get up. What they say, get not down seven, get up eight. I love Denzel for the knowledge he gives. I love Jay-Z. I, I see what he's doing. He getting ready to have some thing where, on November 18th or something like that where he giving job fair. Go, go get those jobs. That's his way of giving back. If you have you in that area, you in the New York, Brooklyn, whatever area, go to the job fair. You know, add on. Don't look at it as you working for somebody. Look at it as you working for yourself. Because that's all it is. Don't get caught up in the hamster wheel. Go in there, work your job, make your money, take your little money. If you want to open a t-shirt business, open a t-shirt business. If you want to open a hat business, open a hat business. But make sure you go get those Wild Bunch hats and Wild Bunch shirts 
You know what I mean? Go give a Shopify support. Support the system, baby. Because it's all all I'm doing is re recirculating. We're gonna recirculate this thing. And make sure you go get that book. Wild Buster, Dimensions of the Brownsville Millionaire. Out now on Amazon. Make sure you subscribe. Share these videos. Like them. Help me build this thing up. We on the ground. We build it. We ain't waiting for nobody. We're going to build this whole thing up ourselves. And you're going to watch over time and say, oh, you know, but we going to all, it's going to all be each one teach one. We're going to all build that. And it's another thing. Because I got to put this in there. I got people, you know, my family, certain people, you do, you come home from jail. You want it, you want it right away. You see this, you see that. You want it right away. But sometimes you got to slow down. You got to, it's hard because I don't want to slow down. I ain't want to slow down. But you got to slow down sometimes. And take a, what on um, Martin say, woosa. You got to woosa yourself and just take your time and watch. Watch stuff. You got to give, I was telling somebody the other day. You got to let it marinate. You put your, you put, God going to help you. But you got to put your little stuff and he help you. Put, we might not move the ball every day, a 50-yard touchdown pass. You know what I'm talking about, football. <laughs> we might not move the ball every day, a 100-yard a, a touchdown return. You know, it might not be the whole field someday, someday one yard. You see Tom Brady, you see one time, sometimes he hit a, hit a, hit a handle, one yard. <laughs> Did he come back? Oh, yeah, see, we loosened him up. You loosen them up, then boom, touchdown. Everybody don't get the touchdown on the first play. Sometimes you just move the ball forward a little bit. But get up every day, you say, here, I got to move it forward. I got to I gotta give it. I can't, Don't tell me you try to do it, but you ain't, you ain't doing no steps. You ain't doing no paperwork towards whatever it is you want to do. You want to open your own business? Start writing, what's your mission? What's your mission? My mission is to help the youth, help the adults, help anybody that feel they want to watch something or they need to talk to somebody to say, man, shit, shit is rough. Because I know how it feel. It was, it's rough. It's rough when you don't have certain people to support you, that you, especially people who you feel should support you. That's like a mental shit because you're like, damn, I'm doing my best. And then, it, it, you know, you're like, damn, if I just had this one, you know, they might know somebody who knows somebody. Because sometimes that do be what it is. You know, it's who you know or whatever. But sometimes it's this, you got to keep pushing. You can't worry about who you got to use what you got. If all I got is the arms to do my push-ups, I don't got the other strength to do some other stuff. I got to do that. You understand what I'm saying? Hold on. I'm going to show y'all. So hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanted to show y'all. I got the Wild Bunch jackets, the Wild Bunch Varsity jackets. Go on Shopify. It's getting a little chilly. You know, I got peoples up in New York, Baltimore, you know, a little on the East Coast. I know y'all need these jackets. Go on Shopify. You know what I mean? I got some deals over there. You know, it's Black Friday coming up. It's holidays. Here we go. It's holiday times. Everybody, I need you to stay safe out there. It's holiday times. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Be careful out there. Don't try to do too much. Just play it easy. Don't spend too much money. You know, bills, you still got bills. Let's be smart out there, people. I want to speak to certain people, so I'm going to talk to certain people sometime because I want y'all to hear these stories. I want y'all to hear where it's not me making up some of this stuff and some of this stuff people can help me so they can let y'all know that it's real out there. Let's make a call. I want to make a call. It's... Let's make a call. I want to I wanna see if we can talk to somebody. Let's talk to somebody. Hold on. This is a real... We're going to talk. We're going we gonna to be making calls and all that. We're going to do this thing the right way. We're going to make some calls. We're going to call some people and get them on the line and see what they about. This person, this is 
Kingsbury. Recently just came home. Hopefully y'all can hear it. I want to talk to him. Let's make some calls. Yeah, what up, doggy? Good morning, good morning. Kingsbury? What's up, son? Yeah, you remember I was telling you, you just came home recent, right? Yeah. And you was in, you was in ADX? Yeah. Do you remember when you first went there? Like how the bus ride was. I went there with uh, me, Pappy Mason. Ho, 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 ho. Pappy Mason was on the, when you went, Pappy Mason was with you? Yeah. Wow. And how was that? Like the ride, go ahead. Well, me and Pappy, it was Pappy Mason, a lot of Mexican mafia, like shot callers, like all the big black hands. The bus pulled up to ADX and the big gate opened up and... The bus went under the tunnel light like, so we can get off the bus. And uh, Pappy started yelling, uh, fuck you crackers, fuck you crackers. And the police dragged him off the bus by his dreads and beat him down and pulled all his dreads out. I remember that day, Claire's, Claire's day, yo. So when y'all first get there, what, they put y'all in cells or something until they, like, classification? Yeah, when you first pull up, you pull up underground, not, not really underground, but like a, a thing called, like, a garage, and you pull up under there, and then the door closes back, and, like, 20, 30 officers come out, and they say they will call you one by one to get off the bus, and when they call you one by one, they place you in, like, a one-man cell. So they do the paperwork, you know, see the doctor, see everybody. And then they give you a bed, bed spread, and then they handcuff you and chain you up. And two officers walk you to your cell. Walk you down the long corridors down to your cell. And what year was this? Uh, I got there, they closed. Well, I was in, first we was in USP Supermax Marion. And they closed Marion in, damn, what year was that? I'm not sure the date they closed it. I can look it up, but they had closed Marion and sent all of us to ADX. And what, that was 90-something more, yeah, right? No, it was, no, it was, it was like 2000 and something. Oh, around like 2002? 2000. It's 2000 and something because I stayed in ADX for 12 years. You was in ADX for 12 years? Yeah, I left in 2010. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, yeah, about 2002, 2001, they closed Marion and made it a uh, medium. Oh, wow. They sent all, they sent all, everybody was high classified and had like, you know, like shot callers. Like I was with, uh, uh, what, what's the dude, uh, the GD dude from uh, Chicago? Larry Hoover. You was with Larry Hoover? Yeah, Larry Hoover, Kathy Mason. And Gino, Lord Gino from the leader of the Latin Kings. Lord Gino, the leader of the Latin Kings? Yeah, yeah, Lord Gino. Uh, Jeff Ford. Who in the L. Rookins. Uh, Pistol Pete. Who ran the Bloods out of, all, out of the Bronx. Yes. Supreme from Queens. Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot. It's a, it's, it's a lot of people, man. So many. It's hard to name because all the celebrities is there. Man. Was you was with Unique Audio? You Mecca Audio from Uptown was here. He said he was in ADX from Harlem. Uh, he, he must be was in the control unit. Oh, he could have been on the. Yeah, yeah. If you, you know, the ADX, they got a control. 
control unit and they got a population unit, but population is still locked down. You know, because at one time, ADX used to be open where everybody go outside with no cuffs on and mingle, but then the Mexican Mafia and the Aaron Brothers was always getting into it with the DC. And it was always, you know, killing and stabbing and so they, they locked the jail down and nobody wrecked. Unless you're in a cage now, or so when you go outside, every you get one man to a cage. And you said they was always getting a tour with the DC dudes. Yeah, the Aaron brothers and the Mexican mafia. Wow, wow! But so, like I said, when you was there, was it like? How they say the 23 and 1, you're not really mingling with everybody. How do you know all these names? Because most of them you travel with or y'all talking in the yard? No, when you go to the yard, you're in cages. So you can mingle with people. Like, you're in the cage, I'm in the cage. So we can talk. And when you go outside, it's like nine cages. So if they start from the back of the range and start coming down, you go out with nine people. But you're not mingling with them. So... Only thing they didn't do was bar fight, bitch ass nigga. Ah, you know, spit on each other, throw shit on each other. That's what they do there. You know, that's that's not what men do. That's what the suckers do. Cause you know you're gonna never catch them. Cause when you get to ADX, it's a program, and they tell you, yo, you give me one year clean, we consider you to move to the step down program. So when you get to the step down program, you're mingling with people you come out your cell with now. So if you beef him with a dude in the back, that's your way to get him when he come there. But most of the dudes that be running their mouths, they don't, they not coming to, to, the, to the step down. And when you get to the step down, they let eight men out at a time. They don't let the whole range out. It's eight at a time. Whoever's on your range, that's who come out. So if you sleep downstairs, you come out with downstairs. So do the units go by numbers, like to say what unit you on? Yeah, the units go by here, J block, K block, L block. That's how it go. A block, E block, D block. You know? And how many on each unit? Well, if you go to, well, if you're in a regular unit where you lock down, it's maybe, what, 12, 12, 12, 24, 24, it's 48, 50, but it's about 60, 60, 70 to a unit. Oh, wow. But they got different ranges. You understand? Yeah. Like, you might be on range A. I'm on B. Then you got C and D. See what I'm saying? So how do people, how do they transfer? Do they do the fishing technique if you wanted somebody pass you a book? Is they doing like that? Yeah, yeah. Like, like when you're in your cell, they inside wreck. Like, every day you don't go outside. You might get inside wreck. One day is inside, one day is outside. One day is inside, one day is outside. So when you get inside wrecked, or you in your cell and they bring guys from other ranges for inside wreck, the wreck cages on the inside is right in front of your cells. Mm -hmm. So you can see the guy working out from your cell. Wow. You know, he's like in a, like a glass booth, you know, a glass booth that's, you know, you can hear echo when you talk, but guys throw the fishing line into each other and fish. But the doors are so thin, it's really hard to get shit up under the door. Because they put bars under the door so you don't fish. Because, you know, dudes, back in the days, dudes used to slide a nigga a knife. Like, like say, like, before they had the lockdown, let's say eight men go outside and it's blacks against whites beefing. The police used to set it up where... You might go outside with five white boys. As soon as them cuffs come off, they're attacking. Oh. That's why they locked it down. Wow. You know? Yeah. That's how they that's how they was getting at each other. That's how dude got killed. Because like the police don't like you, he'll set it up with okay, eight men going out. We gonna send this nigga out with seven motherfucking white boys or Mexicans. They already know y'all beefing. So, if you a nigga and they say you're going out and you say no, you hear niggas tell you, bitch ass nigga, you a soft nigga, go handle your business. That's, that's how I be there. 
Whether you get fucked up or not, nigga, go out there and handle your business. Don't duck, no back. Because everybody who there is supposed to be about that life. Yeah, that's how it was. You know? That's just like, you know, you heard, you heard about the nigga Wayne Perry, right? Wayne Perry, yeah, I heard about Wayne Perry. Okay, he's the nigga that Alpo sent away to jail. He's from D.C. He's there. You know? It's like, he's a killer. But if he go to population, them D.C. niggas gonna get him. They gonna eat him up. Because he done killed a lot of people, uncles and aunts, and, you know? That's why they sent him to a state joint. They sent him to Seattle. Oh, wow. You said they sent him to Seattle State Joint? Yeah. Wow. They sent him to a state joint because, you know, he can't go to population. No matter how tough he think he is, they just going to get him. That's how it is. That's their life. It don't never stop. So when you finally... John you... Gotti was there with me. John Gotti? Yeah, he was there. He got knocked out. So how it went for him to, what, somebody eased up on him or something? Well, dude told him in the red yard, yo, uh, rolled up on him and said, yo, man, send that money to my girl, man. Trying to put the extortion down. John so Gotti told him, if you had my wife, I wouldn't send you no money. And the dude snuck up, sucker punched him, pop, knocked him down, bust his shit all open. Police... Come running out, he ain't telling nothing. He just got up, wiped his face, and then the white boy Aaron brothers came and helped him up. And after that, he was under their wing, like, like, you know. So after that, after the dude hit John Gotti, they, the next night they transferred him to ABX. Got him out of there because they know a hit was going to be on him. So wait, this this happened in Marion? Yeah, that happened in Marion. Okay. Marion, Marion it's like 24 people. You know about that? I think it's about 18 cells on the range. And the whole 18 cells go outside on your range. Yep. So let me get this right. Marion is, is, is called Marion Federal Penitentiary? Yeah, that was the Supermax. Before they built ABX, Marion was the Supermax. And that's located where? That's in Marion, Illinois. In Illinois. Yeah. Okay, there was something about Chicago. Is it close to Chicago or something or no? I mean, it's, 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 it's not close, but it's, it's, it's in the Illinois, you know. I was just asking because what? Is it a lot of Chicago dudes there? No, no, see, in the fans, it's not like that. The fans, people from everywhere is there. Chicago, New York, Texas, California. Anywhere, but you know that the feds, it's no one person, no one state is nowhere unless you're in that state, like, like, say, Hazleton Penitentiary. It's a lot of DC niggas there. Certain places, like you go to Allenwood, it's a lot of New York niggas there. You go to Coleman, New York niggas there. You know, certain places that certain people got it, you know, on lockdowns, more people than you know what I mean. Yeah, I was telling, I was saying, D.C. is everywhere because they don't got no state jails. Yeah, they everywhere, they everywhere, but there's certain places where they're deeper than, like you go to Coleman, you'll have D.C. dudes there, but New York niggas outnumber them five to one. Uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah. But if you go to, you go to Hazleton Penitentiary, them niggas is deep. And you know why New York dominate? It's not a good thing because nobody want to be in prison. But that's because New York travel. New York dudes go to Oklahoma or Texas. They go anywhere for that money. Yeah, and like you go to Beaumont. You know, you know, New York is so big now that we go everywhere. It's not that we go out of state. Because when you get arrested and you get sent to the feds, they're trying to send you close to home. You know, they got a thing where they can send you 500 miles away from home. You know? Yeah. So when you get arrested, the first thing to just, you, you ask them, yo, can you send me close to home so you can get your business? You know? And then when you fuck up there, you go, they send your ass so far away, you dead. 
Wow. So you saying that Marion, that ADX, those are some place nobody want to go. Nah, because people don't understand that. The ADX, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's sweet. As far as you being in the cell by yourself, with a shower in the cell, police never got to fuck with you. You get a color TV, you know, the common semi color. It's, it's just like being in a regular pen. You just lock down, but you get everything a regular pen gets. Only thing you locked down. You feel me? Yeah. You got color TV with every fucking cable channel you want. TV stay on all night. Nobody fuck with you. No police fuck with you. They don't fuck with you unless you are just a dickhead. But people go crazy. Like Pappy Mason went crazy. Some people just can't take isolation. You know? Isolation. When you have to deal with yourself, it's the worst. Yeah, it's like said, some people. You got a couple of TV, you got all the channel stations in it. Oh, okay. After a while, I get old, then what? You start hearing things. You hear dudes talking on the range, and then you hear dudes going, yo, yo, who are you talking to? You talking about me? And, he, and the person ain't even talking to this person. People are losing their mind. That's why they're trying to. Stop putting the mentally insane in prisons because, like, when I was at Man you, you see dudes go crazy, they start eating their shit, putting shit on their face, putting it on the walls, doing crazy shit, yo. I mean, you see guys just lost it, you know? Yeah. Well, like I said, Black was eating toothpaste. listen, like I said, Cut, I'm glad you made it out of there, man, and... You know, I'm glad you out here doing the best you could do now. And like, I'm glad we ever to talk about these stories because I hope it helps you know that's where you don't want to go back to, you know? Like, yeah. you're doing so good out here. And you know, I just want you to keep staying strong, man, because that's what it takes, man. Sometimes these stories can help you remember where you don't want to go, all right? Yeah, I'm saying, yo, you going to write something, man. Make sure I eat, though. Uh, you know, I'm going to always make sure Kingsbury eat, baby. <laughs> I love you, man. I'll hit you back. Like I said, that was Kingsbury giving some true story from ADX. So make sure y'all go out there and get this book, Wild Bunch, The Dimensions of a Brownsville Millionaire, out now on Amazon. And subscribe and like and share this video because it's explosive. Some of the names he was naming and some of the stuff he was talking about, I better see this thing fly. I better see it fly out there because we want to get some confirmations on some of this stuff that Kingsbury was saying. Is this true? What he said. Make sure y'all stay safe out there. Stay safe out there and go get that book.